let's start the show with a look back at the PDC World Championship. Luke Humphreys wins the title. He's the new world number one. He's now won four of the last five major events in the PDC. But just focusing on the last three weeks at Ali Pali, what most impressed you in his run to the title? Well, it's, I think it has to be how he rose to the occasion after his first few matches. Um, because, you know, we were we recorded before the quarterfinal and you asked, and rightfully so, do I stick by him? Not just because, you know, you were going to ask that anyway, whether he was, assuming he was still in it. But it was a legitimate question based on his performances in the first few rounds. Um, you know, that match against Ricardo Pietrecca was the worst match he's had on television pretty much all year. You know, he only had, excluding double start matches before the World Championship, only once all year on television to the average under 95. That match, uh, he very nearly finished under 90. If Pietrecca had been able to hit that dart to go up, uh, to go within a leg in uh, the fifth set um, and be 2-1 up, uh, up a break in that set, he probably would have closed that match out and Luke Humphreys would have gone out averaging under 90. He was averaging around 88 at that time. And even still well into the next set, he was still under 90 and he only got his average just a bit over 91 in the end. So that was really unquestionably his worst televised performance of the year. And it looked it, you know, the previous round against uh, Lee Evans, we haven't talked about that match, but he was fortunate in that one as well. Lee Evans missed a slew of doubles uh, that could have won him the second and third set. The second was earlier in the set, uh, but he had every opportunity to take the lead in that set, still came back in it. And then the third set, he should have won it. Uh, Luke Humphreys could have been 2-1 down in the way he was playing in that match. I don't know if he was going to come back in it. So you look at those two matches, they were two of his three worst on television all year. But he just upped his game from that point on. In that fourth round, we talked about it last time, the match against Joe Cullen, one of the best matches ever on the world championship stage, all things considered, going down to a last leg decider. Um, and he, other than in the penultimate leg when he had those eight darts, and really, as I said last week, 10 darts because he busted first, started a double, a double five hitting the double 12. So he cost himself two darts, a double there. Other than those darts, and a lot of those were not well-thrown darts, he never looked nervous in that. He was down. He was nearly out. He had to survive two match darts, but he kept hitting back. He kept looking the part. He just couldn't get it over the line until finally he then broke in the next leg to win it. Um, with that 100 checkout on double 10. But that was a very good match. And from that point on, he was the best player. He dominated Dave Chisnell, playing what we expected he would bring in that match. In the semifinals, he never let Scott Williams into that match. The first five sets were absolutely as good as anyone's ever played on the world championship stage. He never took his foot off the uh, pedal. He never really gave... Um, Scott Williams a look. He finally started to fall a little bit in the sixth set, but at that point the match was over. And okay, instead of averaging 111, 112, he averaged a shade under 109. But it took till the very last couple legs for him to regress at all. He kept up a 111, 112 standard for five and a sets and the first leg of the sixth set. And it was just consistently at that level. That is Phil Taylor at his best. That is Michael Van Guren at his best. And Luke Humphreys did that for most of that match. And then in the final, it, it could have gone the other way. That run that uh, Littler put on in the fourth, fifth, and sixth sets were just phenomenal, taking nine out of 11 legs. And Luke Humphreys looked almost beat at that point, but he got lucky that second in the deciding leg of the seventh set. And that was a set that all five legs went against throw um, the 142 out. I'll come to it later when we talk about Luke Littler uh, looked at the time, like it was a world championship winning uh, checkout. You thought at that time that he was then going to hold his throw, win the set and five, two up would have been very difficult to come back at from, but that second dart on the checkout combination and the decider hitting a second double 18, leaving him double two. Luke Littler just never was the same after that. He, he didn't hit the double and Luke Humphreys just punished everything the rest of the way. And 
if anything, Luke Littler looked like he was holding on from that point on. And that's a fair assessment of what it should have been. The way Luke Humphreys played those last four sets, you need to be a great player just to hang in there. And Luke Littler did hang. He wasn't coming back, but he did hang. He did pick some legs. He did put Humphreys under pressure. But Luke Humphreys was the world's best player in those last four sets. He was a world champion in those last four sets. He was the world number one in those last four sets. And when he walked off after lifting the title, he had all of that now in his locker. He is the world number one. He is the world champion. He's the best player in the world. And at least over his final four matches, he proved it. Yeah, I think you're spot on. And for me, I think you can make a case for a, a, a lot of different things for what was the most impressive aspect of this Luke Humphreys world title campaign. You talked about rising to the occasion, playing like a, a world number one. We saw the big averages, the power scoring, the finishing that 108 average in the semi-finals, a, a top 10 in world championship history. But I think it's got to be the mental side of Luke Humphrey's game, which played a, a huge part in him going all the way, living up to the, the pre-tournament favourite tag and, and lifting the Sid Waddell trophy for the first time. Because as, as you touched on there, he didn't have things all his own way. And at times he was right up against it. And he looked to be heading home that third round against Ricardo Piotrexco, 3-1 down in sets he looked dead and buried in, in that one but managed to find a way and get over the line and that fourth round against Joe Cullen one of the matches of the year is going to be a, a strong contender in in our awards coming up very soon but surviving those two match darts coming through in, in sudden death and in the final 4-2 down to Luke Littler nearly 5-2 down reels off five straight sets 13 of the last 19 legs to deny his opponent and win the title and this World Championship, we're going to talk a, a lot about it, but it's mostly going to be remembered for Luke Littler and his debut going all the way to the final, breaking a, a lot of records in doing so. But this run to the title for Luke Humphreys, that shouldn't be forgotten quickly because perhaps he was feeling some of that pressure of being the favourite in the early rounds. But once we got to the business end in the new year, to the quarterfinals onwards, we really did see the Luke Humphreys that we expected to see in this tournament. The 103, 108, 103 averages dropping just one set between the quarterfinals and the semifinals. And when it just started to appear that Luke Littler was going to do it, he was going to win the title on debut. Humphreys battles back and some of those legs to close out sets as well. The 1-2-1 the one, one on the ball for a 12 darter to go four all in sets. The 11 darter in the decider of set nine to go five four up, take the lead again. A 12 darter to close out the 10th set. And he was on 36 after nine darts in that leg as well. And after Littler missed those set darts to pull it back to 6-5, Humphreys was there. He was waiting on a double after 12 darts, cleaned up the double eight. And to produce that world-class level in the key moments, it's what we've come to expect now from Luke Humphreys. You think back to the previous three major titles that he's won leading into the World Championship, the final against Gerwin Price in the Grand Prix, the Grand Slam, the games against Gary Anderson, Rob Cross in the final, the comeback against Michael Van Gerwen in Minehead and... Now he's got his name on that biggest trophy in darts. He's top of the world rankings, the two biggest accolades that you could have in, in the game right now. And, and based on the level that he's been playing at for a while, deservedly so.